name is Sean Chase. I'm working on Lumesh. Um, Lumesh was originally started uh, either one semester ago or a couple of semesters ago by a fellow named Jerry Schneider. He's not currently here, he's off in Boston somewhere, and I'm working on it in his step. So first of all, what is Lumesh? Well, normally when you have an application, like an Android application, or your Android phone, you've got your words with friends or Scrabble or whatever, and you want to send something to another phone. Well, what you do is you normally hook up to your 3Gs, your Wi-Fis, you send it there, and they send it to some big server or massive servers off in Wichita or whatever. And they send it there, and then from there, it goes back to however many phones, or just one phone. And the problem with this system is that there's a lot of overhead. If you are just starting up, if you, you know, just want to create an application, um, that you know, uses Androids, and you can't afford a bank of servers somewhere, then this is a problem. And Blue Mesh, Blue Mesh works differently. Blue Mesh lets you set up an ad hoc system between Android phones. And it's a mesh network. And what that means is that if you connect to a phone, and that phone's connected to a different phone, then you are connected to all phones that are connected to you directly and indirectly. Which means that one on the top right and that one on the bottom left can send messages to each other. They see each other as completely connected, even if they aren't. Even though they aren't. And what this lets you do is it lets you create large uh, ad hoc networks as long as you have, you know, you're within a reasonable range. Like if, you know, five of us here were playing a game, not listening to a lecture or what have you, we could do that and we wouldn't need Wi-Fi, we wouldn't need 3G because we're in the room with each other. And that's sort of the application that Blue Mesh is aimed for. How it works in code is you have some sort of application, something that wants to do one object, the Blue Mesh service object. This is all written in Java, by the way. Thread, thread in the server thread. What the client and the server try to do is they try and grab as many connections as they can that are also running Blue Mesh. Uh, and they just grab as many as they can that are in range, and they pass them off to the router object. And the router object will then create a read-write thread for that phone. And it will create as many, for however many phones there are. And that's the general construction in code. And what we want to do this semester, because it work, it, it does work, we've done tests. No, really. Uh, um, one of the big things is you want to allow other devices to use Blue Mesh. Right now it only works for Android phones. Um, and Android has their own development kit. They have their own proprietary system for connecting to Bluetooth and that sort of thing. And one of the things we want to do is we want to have like your Android phone be able to talk to, say, your computer or someone else's computer so that, you know, you, if it's Java, because you can run Java on so many things, we want Blue Mesh to be able to run on that many things as well. Um, there's currently a termination bug that we're working on. Um, we're going to want to allow for messages of, messages of any size. Right now, messages can only be 1,024 bytes long. Any longer than that, and it just, it's bad. Um, we also want to allow for message wrapping. Right now, if you send a message, it sends that message to every other Bluetooth device connected. All of them. And it gets to all of them eventually. And honestly, pretty quickly. We've gotten times of about 0.2 seconds. But it gets to all of them. And we want to add an in-library way of sending to only some phones. And one of the biggest problems with uh, Bluetooth is that it's proprietary, depending on what system you're using. The Windows stack is different from OS X, is different from Android. So, and this is a major problem if you want to, you know, develop a semi-universal uh, Bluetooth application. So I found this other open source project that hasn't been updated since about 2007 called Bluecode, and what it does is it allows, it's a Java API which allows you to communicate with the Windows Bluetooth stack and with OSX, with WDCOM, and a few other things. Which means that if I could parse through this and we can use this, um, then we can allow uh, Blue Mesh to work for Android, and for Windows, and for OSX. And the idea is to create an interface that will allow you to, if you're willing to write the interface, make Blue Mesh work for whatever silly operating system you might want an additional way. But that'll give us a basic three to start with. And 
I'd like to thank uh, Sean Sullivan, Captain Murphy, and all of you. Are there any questions? Yes. Captain Murphy? <laughs> um, I actually have a real question. Have you ever got tracked and uh, greater than or equal byte codes from this, uh, we basically, metaphor, it's they both, they both have the same implementation. They both uh, just dispatch to the object space. So, scary metaprogramming. <laughs> but basically, we have this sort of code. Uh, in the code, so we do have coding to work with that problem. But yeah, right now it does flow the network. Have so you, everybody gets a message. Have you run into issues with like bottlenecking where you have like one person who's connected to larger nodes? Um, during Arcos uh, presentation, our, I think it was our last presentation here, we tried to uh, set up a whole bunch of things, and it didn't work. And I think it might have been due to bottlenecking, but right now we haven't had, uh, we haven't really ex um, experimented with 10, 20, 30 phones. We know it works for three or four. That's where we're at right now. That was close enough for us. OK. Do you have another question? Yes, sir. What okay. kind of range do you use? You said you know, within range. Do you have any idea what that actual range is? Uh, the, like, I'm assuming I can't connect to your mesh in uh, the VCs, from the VCC. Actually, you might be able to. I don't know. Um, the Bluetooth API, last time I checked, it said I think like 100 feet around the oh, okay. So uh, I know from experience that. Uh, when we were testing it, I was in Laoi 104. I was sending messages, and Jerry was wandering around this room, and he couldn't drop it. So it's within the size of the building. And the advantage being that, that if you have an intermediary, that range doubles, triples, for however many intermediaries are in between. So if you have more phones, you can make it bigger now. Are you also planning to have more applications that are testing your Yes, we will write additional applications as we find means to test them. Right now we have a couple of applications. We have uh, like simple chat application. We have one that sends uh, slides for free. We have a few test applications, and those are being revised in some ways. The CLD is being left alone. But <laughs> some of them are being revised, and we'll write others as we need them. Yes. Have you considered doing anything with like making booster devices that can amplify a signal so you can connect two separate networks that normally couldn't talk? Maybe. I mean, you could. You just have to install Blue Mesh on it, and it would act like a Blue Mesh relay. And as far as hardware is concerned, you can do what you like. Any device acts as a booster, and if you wanted to have a specific one, you could. I think I saw a question behind the pole, maybe? No, I'm just Yes. <clears throat> so I was talking to Jerry about this earlier. Right. Um, there was a professor a while ago, one of the professors running for the CS department head, mm -hmm. that was talking about like getting a CS garage. And one of their ideas was to ask people for like their old technology. Um, and one of the ideas that Jerry came up with was trying to send like an email to like the school list or the CS list. Just asking people if they have any old Android phones so that you guys can start like developing a larger test network. Mm. Um, do you have plans to like do that over the summer? That would be nice, and that's something that I'll talk to Jerry about that. Okay. Honestly, one of the one of the reasons we our first test is developing further devices is because if we can get it to work for other devices, like a Windows computer, I can get seven Windows computers. That's easy. Getting seven Android phones has been a challenge. Right now, we only have one in the line because Jerry ran off. Uh, so that'll be something I'll look into for testing Android. Um, and that is that is a problem we've been running into, and that's sort of the idea behind trying to expand the devices we can run Blue Mesh on. Yes? How can I get a phone with you? Where can I be? I have a phone with uh, you. Let's talk after the presentation. Okay. Awesome. Yes? So this is just Android phone. Yeah, any, I say Android phones because Android usually runs on a phone, but it's the Android OS, and as long as the Android OS is connected to Bluetooth, you could run the Android. I just have never seen that, but you could. It's just properly it isn't the Android phone, it is the Android OS, yes. So it works for anything on the Android OS.
up from 2.1 up, I think. Any other questions?